Okay, so this is the robot itself. You can see it's made out of a sheet of 6 millimeter acrylic and um, you can probably get away with uh, 12 inches square of material. Uh, even the wheels are made out of acrylic, although it's arguable about whether or not that's the best idea. Uh, so you can see on the top here that we have our circuit. It has an NU32 board and an XB wireless chip two H bridges and the connector for the battery. So we're using a 13.2 uh, volt uh, LIFEPO4 battery and uh, there's actually four cells in there and an integrated controller card and for the motors we're using stepper motors, they're hybrid stepper motors and we bought them from SparkFun for $12 and also we bought these casters which have ball bearings in them uh, to keep the robot from rocking back and forth and those are also from SparkFun. So one of the biggest things that we had to do with this thing was come up with a whole library of functions that this thing can use to do different kinds of motions that are really easy for a user to just program it and make it do something. So what you're seeing right now is a little GUI that we made for demoing a couple of the different types of operation we have. Um, the three types of operation, like overall, are basically the ability to control each of the wheel speeds individually, um, the ability to give it uh, position and orientation, and to have it figure out how to get there, and um, also a velocity control where you specify a velocity vector, and it makes the front end of the robot, a point on the front edge, follow that velocity vector until you tell it to stop. So yeah, this is the GUI, and that, that white window is basically just maps to a space that the robot is actually in, and you can do both the velocity control and the configuration control from the GUI. Okay, so the first type of operation that I'll show you is the position control. So you can still see that white box, and you can sort of see the space that the robot is sitting in. And remember that white box just maps to where the space that the robot thinks it's operating in. Um, it's originally at the origin, um, and pointed along the positive x-axis. So if I go up to the upper right and give it a click, you will see the robot turn and head towards there. And it always reorients itself with the x-axis. So I can click behind it. It knows to drive backwards. Um, and now I can click at any point in time, make it just go home, and it'll turn and drive back to where it thinks it started. You can see that piece of tape marking where it started. So another thing we can do from this is we can change its default speed, and it'll start operating at a new speed. So I'll type in a new speed in this box, right here, send it over, and now when I tell it to go places, it should move a lot faster. So that's, that's pretty much the first mode of operation. You see it got a little off there, just because I'm running it a little fast and it's sort of skidding around. Okay, so the next mode of operation I'm going to show you is this velocity vector. So when I click in the box, it draws a vector from the origin of the box to wherever I clicked, and then it makes the front of the robot follow that vector until I tell it to stop. And it's sensitive to how far I am from the origin. The farther away, the faster it goes. So if I send it a vector toward the upper left corner, I'll click right about here, um, you'll see the robot turn and start heading that way. And then I tell it to stop, and I can tell it to go home, and it still knows where home is. So um, we'll try just one more vector and we'll go a little bit faster. I'll click a little farther away. <laughs> so send it home. There you go. Okay, so the final mode of operation is just individually controlling the wheel speeds. Um, and we, the interface for this is basically just the Nintendo Wiimote. It's connected to a PC over Bluetooth and we're using the XB chip to send signals to the robot. Um, these buttons are correspond to different directions you want it to go. And pushing different combinations of one and two changes the robot's speed. And while it's doing this, it's still tracking where it thinks it is through odometry. So I can make it go forward, I can make it go backward, I can make it spin, I can make it drive in arcs by pressing combinations of buttons. And at any point in time, I can send it home and it drives home. So go a little faster, send it home, and it still does its best to get home. 